Hey everyone, welcome back to Stream CFD. Today I'm thrilled to introduce an advanced tool for Fire Dynamics Simulator FDS users that optimizes the MPI processes to maximize resource utilization, significantly reducing computation requirements and simulation time for large scale projects, especially for CFD and fire safety engineers who want to maximize the use of computing resources and are looking to squeeze them to their maximum extent. This innovative tool enhances FDS efficiency by redistributing meshes across MPI processes in the most optimal way. It overcomes the common limitation of aligning mesh count with available logical processors, which is especially valuable for complex geometries and large-scale simulations where multiple meshes often exceed CPU availability. This tutorial is geared towards advanced users analyzing real-world and large fire safety and fluid dynamics simulation challenges. Fire Dynamics Simulator, or FDS, is a powerful tool for simulation engineers. However, when dealing with large-scale or complex geometries, especially with curved geometries, or where the simulation domain boundary is not aligned with axes, its meshing system is not very flexible and we may have to compromise on the mesh resolution or simulation speed because the cell count or mesh count exceeds the computing resources we have. So before we dive into the tool, let's first understand why mesh load distribution is crucial in FDS simulations and why optimization is essential. One, complex geometries. FDS uses a structured mesh grid and each mesh must be distributed across MPI processes. To make any change to the underlying cell allocation, we usually need to change the underlying mesh itself. Take a look at this example of a basement car park model geometry. I have removed the interior details of the geometry for obvious reasons. This geometry is not a rectangular domain. Exterior walls are not parallel to the axis and are at a certain angle. In such a scenario, a mesh with an even count of mesh cells is extremely difficult unless we include a large volume outside the domain, which we don't want to simulate and can be excluded. Two, mesh constraints and CPU limits. Although these cells outside the domain cannot be completely avoided, we can reduce the mesh cell count outside the domain by using meshes with smaller bounds along the wall. Here, blue indicates the geometry and white lines indicate the mesh outline, while the red highlighted area is the unwanted cells. I have tried to minimize the number of cells outside the domain by using a mesh with smaller bounds. However, this way we end up having a lot of meshes. This example has 52 meshes, and this number can exceed the number of CPUs or logical processors we have on our machine and running the simulation will be a problem unless the meshes are assigned to MPI processes. Three, uneven load distribution. Okay, but I have access to big machines and have this number of threads available. But what about the wastage of precious computational resources? As we know, meshes with fewer cell counts finish quickly, while others with larger cell counts lag behind. This bar graph here shows the number of cells each mesh has, which is directly proportional to the amount of computation time each mesh requires and the area. In this case, nearly 54% of resources are wasted. This is another geometry with similar problems, 20% wastage of resources. Another geometry, nearly 50% wastage. These numbers can be different if one uses a different orientation or a different meshing approach, but there will always be a wastage of resources associated with simulating complex geometries. Number four, lack of flexibility. There can be cases where I have systems with different configurations, some with 32 logical processors, Intel i9, and AMD Threadrippers with 64 or 128 logical processors. Meshing again in case I want to run the simulation on a different PC is not a good idea. Imagine being able to mesh freely without worrying about processor limitations, just like other CFD software, where we can dynamically allocate the load for each MPI process without changing the underlying mesh. Isn't that amazing? 
That's where MPI optimization comes in. This tool helps you overcome all the limitations we discussed so far. In summary, this tool will help you to, one, bypass the limit of logical processor count for the number of meshes, two, ensure even load distribution across MPI processes, three, provide flexibility while handling complex geometries, four, enable efficient utilization of different types of computing hardware, five, maximize the use of computing resources, reduce wastage, and lower computing hardware requirements. As you know, FDS is a transient solver and computationally expensive. If you use cloud resources, this can result in huge cost savings. These challenges highlight why mesh optimization isn't just beneficial, but essential for tackling the complexities of real-world FDS simulations. And that's not all. There are a lot more use cases that I'm going to reveal in upcoming videos. Now let's explore the tool and see how it transforms FDS simulations. Open your web browser and head on to tools.streamcfd.in. This link is also provided in the video description below for your convenience. Sometimes you may be redirected to an alternate domain when the server is loaded and running a simulation. Nothing to worry about. Once loaded, navigate to the FDS MPI optimization tool. On the page, you'll notice some impressive highlights of its performance. 692 FDS simulations optimized so far, nearly 52% reduction in the number of MPI processes. Approx 49% average reduction in MPI processes per simulation, with 47% average improvement in simulation efficiency. This translates directly to reducing the resource requirements and simulation cost by half. By lowering computational demands, this tool makes large-scale simulations more accessible, even on limited hardware. Also, these stats will keep updating as soon as anyone uses this tool to optimize the FDS simulation. Now let's get started by uploading an FDS input file. This FDS file can be generated from PyroSim, Blender FDS, or any other software you use. I am using the same example we discussed in the beginning. Note that some features can be disabled and have limited options if you are not logged in, so make sure to sign in or register if you do not have an account. Once uploaded, let's start by optimizing with the default options. Click the Optimize button, and voila! On the right, you'll see two tables and plots. The table in red represents the original FDS file we uploaded, along with plots showing the cell count per mesh, MPI process, or logical processor required. By default, each mesh is tied to one MPI process, and you can see there are 52 meshes and 52 MPI processes. The largest process has 97.4K cells, while the smallest process has 5.4K cells. Because of this, nearly 54% of computing resources are wasted. The white space above the bars represents the CPU resources that will be wasted when the simulation is run. The second set of plots and stats shown in green displays the optimization results. As you can see, now we have only 25 MPI processes for 52 meshes and achieve 50% better CPU utilization. Additionally, all the bars have an almost equal cell allocation which indicates quite good optimization in CPU resource usage. The break in the green bar, or the stacked bars, indicates that multiple meshes are allocated to that MPI process. If you hover over the bars, you can see the name of each mesh and the number of cells assigned to each MPI process. You can also verify this by checking mesh records in the FDS file. If you're happy with the results, simply click the Download button to download the optimized FDS file. Once you open the downloaded file, you'll see the running instructions at the top, including the total number of MPI processes and the command to run it on your Windows computer. To start the simulation, just execute this command in the Windows Terminal or Command Prompt. Isn't that amazing? Just in case you do not have FDS installed on your system or are wondering how to run it, I already have a tutorial on this. To watch it, click the card shown on the top right corner of the screen. Now, let's explore the other optimization configuration options. 
The first one controls the number of MPI processes. By default, auto is selected, meaning the mesh with the largest number of cells will be chosen as the max load, and all other MPI processes will be equal to or smaller than that. However, let's say your CPU has only 16 logical processors available. This could be due to your system or CPU specifications, or because another simulation is running simultaneously on your machine. In this case, you can select Fixed and adjust the slider to the desired number of processors. Once you've done that, click Optimize again, and now the meshes will be reallocated according to the maximum CPU limit set by us. Afterward, download the FDS file, open it, and we'll see the run instructions updated to reflect the revised options you selected. Simply run it as instructed. Isn't that amazing? No matter how complex the mesh or how messy the domain, this optimization tool can help you run efficiently. Next, let's dive into the optimization preferences, which are either focused on speed or efficiency. Sometimes better mesh distribution can improve CPU utilization or efficiency, but this might come at the cost of a slightly higher cell count and result in somewhat slower runs. This can be helpful if you're running multiple simulations on one PC and want to maximize its full capacity and accommodate as many simulations simultaneously. I have an example FDS file for this feature demonstration. I have set the max CPU to use to 12. With the, the speed preferred optimization, we have 12 MAMPI processes, while the efficiency preferred optimization reduces it to 10 MAMPI processes, and you can see the resource utilization is better with the efficiency option. Once you're happy with the results, download the optimized file and run it as per the instructions provided at the top of the file. You'll also notice that with every file you optimize, the total stats at the top of the page get updated accordingly. This keeps you informed of cumulative improvements, or I'd say muscle flexing, by this tool. Now let's try a few more optimizations. To start fresh, uncheck the upload widget to clear the uploaded file or simply refresh the web page to reset everything. Upload a new file by clicking the plush button and adjust the options as needed, and click Optimize once ready. The MPI processes were reduced from 77 to 65. However, since I have a maximum of 64 cores and prefer to keep one or two cori for other tasks, such as checking results, I switched to the fixed option and optimized again. With 62 MEPTI processes, a warning appeared indicating 0.8% higher CPU wastage and suggesting splitting meshes for better results. The tool achieved a 19.5% reduction in MPI processes, but splitting the meshes would provide even greater efficiency. Here's another example. After clearing the upload widget or refreshing the page, I uploaded a new file and clicked Optimize. This time, the MPI processes were reduced from 57 to 31, a 45% reduction in MPI processes and a 42% improvement in CPU utilization. Lastly, an example for urban airflow and pollutant dispersion modeling in a very large domain with 149 meshes. After optimization, the tool reduced the number of MPI processes to 88. Note that the number of meshes is quite high, at 149, because the mesh is refined selectively in the region of interest, whereas the background surrounding mesh is relatively coarse, just sufficient to allow the wind profile to develop accurately, according to the logarithmic law, or monin obakov similarity. This exceptional ability to handle such a large domain so swiftly was one of the motivations behind developing this tool. I'm thrilled to make it available to the fire safety and CFD communities, and to anyone else, to experience faster, more efficient simulations. Once you're satisfied with the output, download the optimized file. Keep in mind that the file will remain available for approximately 30 minutes before being automatically deleted. However, anonymous optimization statistics are saved to showcase the tool's performance. 
Now that I have demonstrated the features, you might have some questions about this tool. To address them, here are some commonly asked questions, summarized as FAQs. 1. What is CPU wastage or inefficiency, and why does it occur? In multi-mesh simulations, CPU inefficiency arises when MPI processes have uneven workloads due to differences in mesh cell counts. Faster MPI processes finish early, remaining idle while slower processes catch up. This idle time wastes CPU resources. 2. Does this modify or split join meshes, cells, or bounds? No. It only redistributes the load by reassigning MPI processes. You no longer need to worry about splitting meshes or alignment problems. Mesh once and run on any CPU or MPI count. However, we do have plans to add that in upcoming versions. 3. Does this tool always improve efficiency? For local simulations, yes, in most cases, if the simulation and meshes are sufficient. For cluster simulations, performance may vary due to potential network bottlenecks. For smaller simulations with equal cell counts per mesh, your setup is already optimized. Even if we keep accelerating, we cannot exceed the speed of light. But still, this tool can be used to update in cases where the number of meshes exceeds the number of logical processors or or CPU counts on your machine. Four, um, if you see no improvement or very little improvement after optimization, but still high CPU inefficiency, in such cases, try splitting meshes, especially those with coarse resolution, if there are multiple mesh sizes, because that way there are least chances of mesh alignment problems. If you follow this, there are higher chances of better results. Number five, can I resume a simulation previously run with a different number of processes? Unfortunately, no. This is a limitation from FDS itself, and because of these limitations, FDS restart files require identical meshes and process distributions. We hope this feature will be, will be added in future FDS releases. That's all for today's video. I hope you found it insightful and helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If this tool has been valuable to you and you'd like to support us, consider sponsoring us through Buy Me A Coffee. Your contributions help us create more content and develop useful tools for the CFD community. If you have any questions or face difficulties while using these tools, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out via our LinkedIn, X page, Telegram group, or email us at info at streamcfd.in or streamcfd.a at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Stay tuned for more tutorials and tools on CFD analysis and modeling. Until then, keep optimizing, keep simulating, and stay curious.